Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about dehydrating um, food preservation that involves drying food. Uh, you could also say that there's smoking or there's um, jerking or, or other things like that, but uh, anything that has to do with just pulling moisture out of fruits and vegetables and even meat is what we wanted to talk about today. This is my husband, John. And he has a different take on food preservation than I do. He has his preferences, and they're very different from mine. And that's why I wanted to come on and have him involved because uh, to kind of show the other side of the coin. For me, I love to build with pallets. I love to build with free. If I have to spend money, I will. But I try to spend as little as I can, and I don't like gadgets. I really don't like gadgets. That is super, super distracting. That's the same <laughs> to as watch there. myself You're in two this. screens. Um, so when we butcher, I'm the one that butchers. And if I'm going to butcher something, I cut it at the joint and I don't label anything. I just think, oh, no, it's lamb. When John helps with butchering, he labels things. He cuts them into nice little packages. He cuts them into strips and he takes a lot of time doing it. And so he's very meticulous with that kind of thing. And I'm just like, let me get it done. And John also likes lots of buttons. And he loves buttons. Things to touch and twist and tinker. And he's a computer guy. And so he likes to have his appliances have lots of options, programmable, talk to it from a distance, talk to it from another state if he needs to. He loves everything technology. And I am not a huge fan of technology. So um, good morning, everybody. So the three specific appliances we're going to review today because we've used all of them is the Garden Master dehydrator by Nesco, the um, the Harvest Right freeze dryer, and then you can't even get this one anymore, but I, I still want to talk about it. The food pantry, pantry with a P-A-N-T-R-I-E, pantry with an R-I-E. <laughs> And, and that one is a solar hanging open air dehydrator. I looked everywhere trying to find one to be able to give you guys a link for it. I couldn't find one. In fact, I'll show it to you right now. This one is the one you can't get anymore. It's a hanging dehydrator. And um, they're not inexpensive. When I bought them, they were like $50 a piece. But I've had those at various times throughout my life. No, it's well, I'll kind of show I'm not sure it's going to hang right. Do you want to go well, around no, and get it? That's right, do you want to come get it from the other side? It. It's going to try an accordion. <laughs> it's going to try an accordion into my head. Yes. Is what I'm saying. Uh, okay, so yeah, we'll explain this one. So, so of course you have your hanger here. And it all just... We, what we do with that one is we hang it right in, at the corner uh, at the coolest end of our whipping stove and we dehydrate things there. I also take it outside and hang it from a shelving elbow on the side of the smokehouse during the summer. And it works great. I tried to find something as close to it as possible on Amazon. And it, it, it really wasn't even close because this one has rigid trays. Let's see if I can pull one out for you. Um, this one... This one has rigid trays. See, I've got a little bit of zucchini stuck on it. You can't really dehydrate something heavy if you don't have rigid trays. So I, I don't know if the one that I found for you guys in the description has that, but it was as close as I can get. I think it was $30. That one, if the trays aren't rigid enough, you might only be able to put something like sliced fruit or, or maybe just herbs. But... Um, this uh, food pantry, this open air dehydrator, does not dehydrate the bulk of my food. What does the bulk of our dehydrated food? Um, the reason this is the dehydrator that I'm uh, telling you about is because this is the one that I've had the best luck with. It's a, it's a garden master and it's a specific garden master from Nesco. It has lots of different types of trays. This is for dehydrating um, things that aren't real messy. I like to have a screen on the tray because it keeps it from, again, being messy. It's easier to take the food off. And then this one didn't get rinsed. It's got little, you can see it's got little clear things on it. This one is for messy things like fruit leather. 
So this is the Garden Master Nesco. And again, I have the specific one that I have in the description because they have some out there that say Garden Master, but they don't have enough trays or they don't have the BPA free trays, that kind of thing. So I got this one. I got this one three years ago, and then I had another one before that. I asked my mom. Can you just hit time? There you go. Um, I got this dehydrator the first time when John and I got married. This is what I asked for from my mom as her wedding present to me for my bridal shower. I asked for this dehydrator. And um, so this is my second one that I've owned. The, the last one lasted for 13 years and I've had this one for two or three years. And what I dehydrate on it is all my uh, garden produce that's like peppers or tomatoes or carrots or things like that. So that's the Nesco. And then let's see, uh, a year ago, six, eight months ago, what the harvest, right? How long, how long ago did we get that? I think it was seven, eight months ago. Harvest Right reached out to us and asked if I wanted a, a, a freeze dryer. And my mom has a freeze dryer. Do you want to hand me the trays that, that mom uses? They're just right there in front of you. Okay. So what my mom does is my mom has, she got the Harvest Right, I think, three years ago. And what she used it for was to make allergy free food for my brother that was shelf stable. And I wanted to show you what she uses. She uses little silicone trays, little silicone trays to put liquids and things in to freeze dry it. And um, she makes some really amazing food doing it. And tr these trays. And um, she spent months and months and months using the freeze the freeze dryer, the harvest right. And so when they asked me if I wanted one, I said, yes, I would take one and try it out. Enter John, because I, I took one look at the freeze dryer and I said, this is not for me. It has buttons. It has warnings. It has oil that you have to change. It's programmable. And I have to have a special outlet. I need to have a special designated breaker for this freeze dryer. Also, you don't want it in dirt. You don't want it in dust and you've got to wipe down all the little inside crevices and everything every time you use it. It's got finicky little shelves. Uh, let's see the covers. These covers. Okay. So one of the things they sent me, let's see. I don't know how to open it. One of the things they sent me was these new lids that can be used as trays. So this, this is a new lid. What do they call this? A medium snap on tray lids. So they sent me these trays that you can put the food in to freeze because a lot of times you want to pre freeze your food before you put it in the freeze dryer. It saves you so much time. Right. So this is why I'm crazy about not liking freeze dryer. <laughs> it seems so tedious and so many different steps. But you can, these trays are, can go in your freezer. And you put the food in it and it, you freeze it in the freezer and then you transfer it onto your normal trays and put it in the freeze dryer. This allows you to pre-freeze things without tying up your normal metal trays, if that makes sense, which I think is a great idea. But again, I'm very much come in and get it done, woman. But John took it over and I said, if we're going to keep this tool, I'm not going to touch it. You build it, you plug it in, you monitor it. I want nothing to do with it. So enter my mom. My mom loves her freeze dryer. She loved it. And that's why I said, I, I get it. John liked the freeze dryer too. So I let him have it. So what happened with your love of gadgetry and food preservation? It freeze dries food and does a great job. Okay. <laughs> um, no, the freeze dryer has been great uh, to tinker with, and uh, should, I should go find some of the candy. Uh, we've done quite a bit with it. Uh, my favorite, I guess, do you want me to start on recipes? What do you want? To... Well, first he had to find a place to put it where it could be by itself. It's very loud. 
at certain phases, it's very loud. It has a little catcher that catches the moisture that runs off the freeze dryer because it's 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 freezing things. It's pulling moisture out by freezing things very cold. How cold does it go? I think it goes down to negative 20. Negative 20? Fahrenheit, yeah. So like you want a room for it away from the family. You want a room for it away from dust and a place where... Um, Things aren't going to be spilled on it. We put it in our freezer room downstairs. Yeah. And it, it puts off heat too. So don't forget all that heat that it's pulling out of the food and all of the heat that the mechanics are, are creating all have to go somewhere. So it ventilates all that into the air. So it warmed up our basement 8 degrees, 10 degrees probably. So it wasn't a bad thing in the winter. In right. the winter, it actually heated the basement. That's how much heat you have is it kept it in like at like – 60 when it was on 65 even yeah, yeah. Push and and we don't have a heated basement and it's cold in idaho so it kept it about 65 when it was running um i'm not trying to i here's the thing here's the the way that i look at it is freeze dryers or ferraris uh regular dehydrators are little toyotas and so if you want a Ferrari, you're going to pay for a Ferrari. It's going to be a little more finicky. You have to send it into a specific shop to get worked on. Your local guy can't work on it. Um, at, you have to have special this and special that. And you need to really pay attention to it in order to preserve your um, investment. I'm not, I'm not that kind of girl, which is why I handed it to John because I'm like, I know how much food I can turn out with a regular dehydrator. I would have to be having a very calm time in my life to want to do something with a food, um, a, a freeze dryer. I'm already gardening. I'm already dehydrating. I'm already making cheese. I think if you're going to be a freeze dry home, it, somebody needs to love it and they need to set time aside every week to, to use it. The other thing is the electricity. It, it uses some electricity. Um, it needs to be on its own breaker. Well, in fairness, too, it, so does the dehydrator. The so, dehydrator does. And they both will warm up your house yeah. quite well. But the dehydrator doesn't need its own breaker. It's not drawing that much power. And it's a little bit loud, but it's not really loud. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we did find was one thing that we did find was that um, when there was an, a problem initially within the first couple weeks, and John called in for customer service. It took some time for them to get back and offer solutions. Of course, they, they didn't <laughs> call back. We never got solutions. We had to go to a local store that actually sells these. And he is, can we pitch him? The, the preparedness store in Idaho Falls? Um, yeah, if you're yeah. here local, the preparedness, is it preparedness pantry? Or preparedness, no, store? preparedness store. The preparedness store, is it by Fred Meyer? It's on the north side of town, I think. Just look them up. On it's not It's not next to the Fred Meyer? It used to be. I think it is now. Maybe. I don't remember. So you called I him? I called him. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So um, anyway, super helpful. Those guys are really into it, and they really enjoy uh, that. So they're full of advice. And found out that this is – they they say that this is normal for it to – freeze on one side or the other is just uh, kind of luck of the draw. So, so we don't have, we, we, the, I get, I, I don't think any of that is a game game deal, deal a, breaker. a deal breaker. I don't think any of that is a deal breaker except the price to me to spend $3,500 on a tool and then have it be complicated is where I feel the bind. If I'm going to get a tool, I want it to be simple and inexpensive. If you're going to make it expensive, it had better plant my garden for me and then harvest it too. Um, for and, that kind of money. And be one button operation. And be one button operation. It just, it has to do all the work for me. I, I cannot imagine that 3,500, that's how much I spent on my greenhouse in the back. And I had to get a Kickstarter together to pay for that because it just wasn't in my budget. So I think the reason you might want to get a, a harvest right freeze dryer is one, what is your climate like? For us, we're very dry. I can have dehydrated carrots in a jar on my counter for a year and it won't mold and it won't mildew because we're very dry. If you live in a humid area and you cannot dehydrate things and then rely on them staying moisture free, 
a freeze dryer is for you if you're in a really humid area. Another reason might be if you have a very, very sensitive diet requirement or a child with a very, very sensitive diet requirement because you can take prepared, pre-cooked, pre-seasoned food. And whereas with a dehydrator, the, you can't really do that. It's not ready to eat the minute that it's finished. With a freeze dryer, all you have to do is add water again. Some of it you don't even have to add water again. And you have a pre-made meal that doesn't need to be cooked. And so I think those are the two reasons to have a freeze dryer. Okay, so I do have the Harvest Right freeze dryer link in my description if you want one. I also have the link for the Garden Master. I also have the link for the solar dehydrator that I've never used, and it doesn't look as good as the one I had, but I couldn't find the one I have because I don't think they make it anymore. So I do have the links. But with how much you just heard me say, you really have to be the right demographic. I'm not, I'm not pushing them on you. I'm just saying those are the ones I use, and um, it does benefit our homestead if you get it from us, but choose wisely. Padawan. Yeah. So now once that's over, well, that, that's why my mom has a harvest, right? Is because she and my brother have very specific needs. My brother was in an accident. They had to remove a foot of his large intestine. He doesn't digest food the same way he used to. And so her being able to take something, cook it, and then put it in these little silicone trays that she uses and get it in, get it frozen in the freezer and then put it in her harvest, right? And get it down. If, if my brother needs food, he has food now. Some of it's delicious. Some of it is unexpectedly delicious. All right, let's get through some comments. Log Cabin Bakery said, freeze dryer is on my wish list. Hoping for next season. Need to save for it. My husband loves buttons too. He's also a computer guy. Yeah. I think if you, if you love gadgetry, yes. The, that being said, do we have a bag? Didn't I have a bag? One of the Mylar bags. Here it is. Right here. Okay. So you see this little baggie? If you've got one batch of like freeze dried stuff, this is a whole tray. A whole tray would go into this guy. I'd say that's about a half a tray. No, because I just I just got a whole bunch from my mom. Where's our milk? It's downstairs in the pantry. Should I go run and get it? Was that from no, one whole batch? It. It's on the shelf somewhere. No, because the one whole batch took that was. Wasn't gallons. it a quart? It was two gallons of milk. It was so two gallons of two quarts per tray. Okay, so two quarts per tray was and it was one gallon of milk in at one time, and then it came down to a, about two thirds of a quart for milk. Okay. So some of the things that John has played with is goat's milk, yogurt candy, fruit. The fruit, as soon as he had it in the freeze dryer, uh, the minute that it came out, it was eaten. He did bags and bags and bags of peaches last year. And as soon as they came out of the freeze dryer, we ate them. John didn't eat them. He didn't know we were going through them that fast, but the girls and I just plowed through them. It was fantastic. They were so good. However, our normal peaches that we like just put in the dehydrator are also something that disappears very quickly. So okay. as far we've as gone, we've gone through almost all of our dairy planting left is one yogurt. You did a yogurt. So, and so is that one tray? So that's a two pound thing of yogurt. yogurt. And was this one tray? Yeah. Okay. So one tray. Two, one tray. Two trays. No, one tray. One tray of you. Are you sure? Because I remember it being down to less than that. Wasn't less than that? Was that two trays? One tray. I think that was one tray. Okay, so that's yogurt. Because you can fit two pounds of um, tray. One thing that you'll find with the freeze dried stuff, stuff is that it can taste chalky. The milk tastes chalky. The yogurt tastes chalky. When it's rehydrated, it doesn't taste like it did when you originally put it in the tray. Especially, well, you use. See, that's where I'll disagree. You use store bought, though. Right. He didn't use our homemade uh, yogurt because it was a little bit thinner. And when you do store-bought yogurt, it has gelatin in it, which doesn't dry out and then rehydrate again the same. Um, so I actually think that's where the chalkiness came from with the yogurt was because a uh, commercial yogurt has gelatin in it. Maybe. I didn't notice any difference once it was rehydrated. Um, 
And actually, I like to eat it dry or just put it in with regular. Milk. You did it in smoothies. We put it in me with milk, uh, like actual milk, and then dumped in instead of water. Yogurt. Well, instead yeah, of water. Instead of water, and then you'd have a really good smoothie. So. Okay. Um, to me, that feels finicky. I feel like I don't mind things just looking like dehydrated stuff. But if you're going to tell me that it tastes fresh and is amazing, like normal fresh food, and I spent $3,500 on it, it better be exactly what I put in there and not have any chalkiness. I'm super picky about things that are that expensive. It drives me crazy. Yes, ma'am. Uh-oh. Did the side gate get closed? Kennel. Yeah, downstairs to the kennel. Or Kaya. Kaya, you go out with him, okay? No, you're going to go out and run him. He was really good. And that's fine, but I bet he went through the side gate. It was supposed to be clipped. I hope not. Um, let's see. Avon Leanne said, during all the crazy, we decided to bite the bullet and buy the freeze dryer. Been putting it off, but my husband likes all the tools, so he was all over it. Yeah. And I know people who bought it and let it sit in their garage for six months because they were overwhelmed and intimidated by the amount of prep work and building you need to put up. Like, for instance, my mom's harvest right is in her laundry room. And um, my dad had to do some different stuff to, to give it its own breaker because it couldn't be on the same breaker as the washer and dryer. It's too big of a pole. And so um, it takes up some space for my mom. And it's really loud. And you can see, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little biased. Um, let's see. Robert Rittenhouse said, we recently bought a used Excalibur four tray dehydrator. Love that thing. It'll be nicer when it's food from our garden though. Going in at freeze dryer will be a few years, but I want one. Um, so that's another thing that I had on my list is when you're uh, using a freeze dryer or a dehydrator, you have to factor in the cost of food. If it's not coming from your garden and you're having to buy it from the grocery store, wow, it's it's a lot of food to be putting through um, and it's better to buy things in bulk. Um, it's better maybe to get it at the farmer's market so you can really get it in bulk because dehydrators and freeze dryers go through a lot of food pretty quickly. Um, so for me, having an open air dehydrator that I can stick on the corner of my wood burning stove during the off season is really nice because that doesn't pull any electricity. And if you are in a really hot, dry area, like in Arizona, having open air dehydrators that you just sit on hooks out along the side of your house, um, in the shade. Wow. You can do all your dehydrating if you're in like, you know. Arizona, Nevada, Southern California. It, here in the summer, if you're July and August, we can do some dehydrating like that because we're arid, but uh, we really don't get enough heat until about July and August to be able to run uh, our, our open air dehydrator outside. But it works like a charm on the wood stove. Um, let's see. Avonlea Ann said, agree about the price, and also it will only work if we have electricity. It is not out of the reality that our electricity would be cut on a regular basis. Correct. Mm -hmm. And when the freeze dryer gets turned off, it has to start the cycle again, doesn't it? No, well, it has to dehydrate. Because it, it heats up again, right? You need to melt all the water off. You can usually, if you had something that didn't have a whole lot of water in it on your first batch, you can get away with the second batch. But ice builds up around everything and it kind of closes in on your food until it just about touches it. So And then it melts and you have water that goes down into a bottle that needs to be uh, emptied. Right. So, but yeah, the, the point of the freeze dryer is not grid down situation. It's to use it to prepare for that grid down situation. So. And make sure that you try your food along the way, whether it's a dehydrator or whether it's a freeze dryer. Try your food along the way. I think yes. our fire is out. Did, when was the last time a log went in? Um, yeah, no, I'm not telling you to go away, but, but you're the one who's going to be cold in the house here in a minute when I go back out to do work. Let's see. Avonlea said my solar oven can dehydrate in a pinch. Um, I have a, what's it called? Solar oven. What is it called? Sun oven. I have a sun oven and, um, it's a fun tool. The, the actual space in it for dehydrating is tiny. Uh, doing open air in a warm situation is definitely faster and more efficient than a, a sun oven. 
Um, I have a sun oven and it is also not one of my favorite tools because it's picky. I have to monitor it. I can't go out and do something else without really kind of monitoring it sometime because where the sun is in the sky, you have to turn your sun oven to follow it, depending on what you're cooking. If you have sudden cloud cover, it stops cooking it. It may still be warm in there, but it's not cooking it. Um, and so I, I think it's a great tool to have, but it's again, one that you have to be finicky with. You have to be close enough that you can move it as needed and check on it, but don't check on it too much because you don't want to open it, um, that kind of thing. And as far as a dehydrating tool, the surface area is so tiny. Um, I feel some anxiety about using it for relying on it for a source of food and, and dehydration. Um, let's see. Gadianton X says solar power dehydrator or or oven, the air dryers the old folks use is, are great. Um, when I was a kid, what my mom would do is she would take uh, screen doors and, or to all intents and purposes, she made a frame and used screen door material on it. I think it was food grade though, but I'm trying to give you like the idea of what it is. It's like she made herself a screen door, but the mesh was food grade. And then she'd have cinder blocks in the driveway. She'd set up cinder blocks in the driveway and she'd place that tray that was the size of a screen door on the cinder blocks above the concrete. It was really important it was concrete because the concrete would reflect heat up into the food, if that makes sense. You wouldn't want to put it down directly on the ground because directly on the ground there's not airflow and no heat reflecting. So you put it on a concrete pad, you just use your driveway, and then she put another tray on top of it or a roll of cheesecloth on top of it. And that was how my mom dehydrated massive amounts of food when we lived in Twin Falls. They're much warmer than we are here and lots of fruit. And so my mom did gallons, five gallon buckets upon five gallon buckets of fruit leather and um, uh, dehydrated fruit and corn and things like that on these trays that she made because she didn't have any money, she just built them herself. And we would go and forage. We would go get free free fruit and free corn from farmers when they were done harvesting their fields. They would tell her, go ahead and go harvest. And we kids would get in the back of the station wagon and go get bags and bags and buckets and buckets of food, bring it home, process it, and mom would dehydrate it out on the driveway. And that's how my mom did it when I was a kid. Um, MLP said, for two people, I just can't justify the cost considering we can preserve and dehydrate. And that's how I feel about it. I think it's a gadget. I think it's a tool. <laughs> well, it's, it's the same. Ultimately, what I feel like you can say about the freeze dryer, you could say about the food dehydrator. They both use electricity. They both create heat. They're both noisy. They both. One costs uh, $179. One costs $3,500 and has to be shipped back to the factory so to get fixed. Scalability. Ah. All, well, where are you going to fix your food dehydrator at? Well, for that price, I can buy another one. Okay. But they do so, have a they do have a warranty. So if things go out on the freeze dryer, you can buy another one. It's just. No. Yeah, it all just goes in mud. So I the, think the freeze so dryer really, has a much bigger the, the uh, really warranty. The big thing about this sounds like it's just the cost then. A co the biggest bang for your buck. For me, if you're growing food, it's because yes. you don't have a lot of money. So if you don't have a lot of money, you don't have any business buying a $3,500 tool. You have, you know, get, get the tool sure. that works for the price you can afford. I have spent less than that on vehicles that I've owned when I was a kid. <sighs> not, not okay. Um, okay. Avonlea said, usually I just bunch up my herbs and hang upside down. Yeah. And we do the same thing. I've got some herbs up there right now, especially over the wood stove in the winter. It's really nice. Um, Andrew Blue said this week I air dried wild chives from my yard. That is awesome. Yes. Avonlea said, your mom sounds amazing. My mom is amazing. Both of my parents are tinkerers. My dad built his own home and wired it and did the plumbing and everything. And my mom is very much into food production and health protection, but they're both very much tinkerers. Um, Angela Natto said, I got a dehydrator for free, but it came with no instructions. Well, usually, you know, usually the good dehydrators don't really need instructions. They have like a thermometer. 
thermostat, thermostat and an on. Generally, a good one is like that. Um, let's see. Andrew Blue said, I got a huge polyester netted air dryer at and a Nesco. The air unit was $28 on Amazon, and it, it's five feet tall, huge diameter. Nesco was double old price at $120. So the one that I have that I like, I don't like the smaller ones from Nesco. I only like the Garden Master. And when the last time I bought it, it was $179. I think it's now over $200 for the one that I think is worth having. Um, so, oh, that's a good idea. Andrea Blue said, look up instructions online to see if you can print at home or library. Okay, did you feel like we have any other, anything else to add to the discussion of prices or, or utility of the appliances or anything? Uh, taste of food. Well, um, we we kind of got that with the yogurt. The However, I, I think that's a good jump one. In. Tomatoes taste absolutely amazing coming out of the freeze dryer. They are crunchy chalky. They'll go to powder in your mouth, but eat them dry. And the concentrated flavor of a tomato, uh, you cannot replicate that from anything in the store. And uh, I think that the dehydrator doesn't do it justice. I think the big difference for me in that is that on a dehydrator, is still chewy and kind of leathery. It still has some moisture in it. And with the freeze dryer, it's all out. And so it's crunchy and turn, like he said, turns to powder. And I do think that the texture is nicer with the freeze dryer. As far as that goes, the texture is very nice. Um, but for again, for our climate and how much moisture we have in the air, the dehydrator works just fine. But yeah, the, the, I, I think you're right. It's, it's a crunch for the freeze dryer. It's kind of a chew, 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 chew for the dehydrator. Unless it's overdone and kind of burned. While we're on the subject, Avon Leanne comes back. Can you talk about the oil that the freeze dryer uses? How much, how often, and where do you get more? So they uh, shipped us the, not the baseline one, but the one step up the, well, I don't remember, the premium air pump, I think. And it's the air pump, the vacuum pump that needs the oil to run. And that's to help it seal and keep everything lubricated because it's going to run for. 20 30 40 hours at a stretch and that oil is helping to cool off all of the internal moving parts um with that premium pump you're you only need to change it every 30 times or something and you've got a little looking glass in the side of it to see if it's starting to get cloudy or not look good and you can also strain it out so there's uh so the oil i personally think get one spare and then it's become kind of a non-issue. Um, just get a spare quart of their vacuum pump oil, and then you can rotate between the two. I have yet to still do an oil change or, or filter because the oil still looks good. Okay, does anybody have any more questions? I feel like we really covered it. Again, I do have the links in the description. I'm trying to get somebody put together for that rabbit hutch run that you can use if you're in an HOA. My first question is, if you're concerned about the future, why are you still living in an HOA? Because you're really, unless major disaster happens, you're really limited on what you can grow and what you can do in an HOA. Um, however, that being said, I am trying to find a way to make the self-heating greenhouse and a rabbit slash quail slash duck run, um, how to make one that is incognito enough that you could use it in your backyard in an HOA. That's why I'm doing this like, if you want a Ferrari, I have the link in the description. I don't recommend you get a Ferrari, but you can get one if you want one. Um, that's my goal in this is I'm trying really hard to get that put together. And if you live in an HOA, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe now is not a time to be living in a super fancy neighborhood that doesn't let you grow food and makes you mow your lawn to like a certain centimeter height. Um, let's see. Andrea Blue said, Rain Country talks about alternatives to the mesh liners or jelly roll trays. Rose Red Homestead has also used plastic foil lids like sour cream lids for wet items and rotate. Um, Andrea Blue said, my husband is a tinker and I'm blessed for it. Um, you're, you're blessed for it. I thought you were going to say I'm the tinker. No. No. <laughs> Buttons. Tinker. <laughs> Got to move things. Things. My husband likes to sit and, and uh, stare at things for a very long time. 
and then and then like just play with them and it's like playing is part of is is like enough of a reward huh just playing with it is enough for me if i'm gonna stare at it and work on it for a while i better be getting a heck of a lot of crap out of it i better be getting everything out of it if i'm gonna spend time on it i want results and i want them now i'm very impatient i'm very impatient about what comes back from my time it's very good that I have somebody who can push buttons and oh, figure things out. I can out. push buttons. <laughs> let me tell you. So, I don't even try. And you buttons get try. pushed. So. Um, yeah, so the freeze dryer never would have been used if John hadn't been there to, to work with it. And he did a good job on it. And we've got all these extra little parts and everything that need to go to my mom's house. Um, I want to do a video sometime in the future of my mom explaining how she does hers what she uses it for, uh, that kind of thing. And anything else anybody wants to talk about before I go back out and uh, put together a pig pen? Let's see, Andrea Blue said, oh wow, freeze dried tomatoes. I wish I could get the harvest right, but I can't do the cost. Sure. Me neither. It drives me crazy. It, I think it even irritated me that it was even in the house to some degree. I was always thinking, oh my gosh, what if somebody bumps up against the harvest right? Oh my gosh, what if like a tree branch fell through the window and hit the harvest right? Have you tried fermented tomatoes? No. I have. Oh, yeah? mm -hmm. It tastes um, pickleish, kind of. Um, I have a book, How to Preserve Without Sugar or Canning, I think is what it's called. It's a great book. And you mash the tomatoes and you let them sit and you mash the potato to the tomatoes and let it sit and mash them and let them sit. And I'm trying to remember, I, I don't remember if I had to add salt or not, but once they're done, you just pour oil on the top and the oil seals them so that they stay good. And it's great for um, tomato sauce and that kind of thing. All right. I can hear the farm calling me. So Actually, I better answer. On the road. No, I can hear it. It's calling. We've got. Speaking of what so, hmm. Did anybody else hear the car alarm going off about 20 minutes ago? I was mm -hmm. just rolled my eyes like, we're in the country and somebody mm -hmm. has a car alarm going off. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. In olden times, a tinker was a person who traveled around fixing metal implements for people. Correct. A metal, weren't they a metal worker? Yeah. Danny from Deep South Homestead do an oil change. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they really like theirs. Uh, it seems like they do a lot with it. Um, they also have a longer growing season. For us, when it's time to start preserving food, it's time to do it now, and it's time to do it fast. Um, Angela Nato says, does your mom have a channel? My mom does not have a channel. She is occasionally on my channel, like once every couple of years. Um, I have a video with her talking about turmeric. So if you look up Dirt Patch Heaven turmeric video, you should see my mom. Um Yeah, Log Cabin Bakery said, good comparison from both sides. Have a great day. Garden is waiting. Um, okay, so what was I saying before that? I don't know. The farm was calling. Oh, we have a pig that's due to Pharaoh anytime now. And so I have my hog panels ready and we need to move the pigs away from where they are to a spot where they're not drowning when we flood irrigate, which starts next week. And so Kai and I are going to go get the pig pen put together and get some shelter put together for the pig and Paige is out there. Uh, shearing the sheep. And I'm going to go draft some tree, draft some trees. I thought you were in here making lunch. Unless you want to go the get lunch. lunch. I have a lunch thing. Um, Andrew Blue said, I'd love to let rabbits have a large enclosure like Marjorie Wildcraft to graze a nest. Well, that's what I'm putting together. I, I, I also have hog panels for that project. I'm going to use some gabion fencing. If you've seen that, it's where you use um, two fences running close together and you put rocks in the middle. So it looks like a rock wall, but you don't have to use mortar or anything. You can take it down and, um, a little, a little easier for a, a homesteader to do. If it looks nice, that's going to be kind of the basis of what I'm doing instead of pallets. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. Okay. All right. Thanks as always. Off we go. Thank you guys. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.